Hello, welcome to LMU Tri-State News. Thank you for joining us for another edition of Local and Campus News, Sports and Entertainment. Filling in for Ashley Hurley, I'm Adam Plyler. Let's get started with this week's top stories. The Lincoln Memorial University School of Business is once again offering free tax preparation services through the Internal Revenue Service Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program. School of Business students will be preparing taxes under the supervision and guidance of Assistant Professor of Business Roger Holt, a retired IRS employee, three days a week through Monday, April 14th. The IRS tax deadline is April 15th. Holt and his students are trained on the IRS tax software and are certified to e-file returns. The services are available for basic returns, including state income tax reporting. VITA has set up a temporary office in room 116 of the Business and Education Building on LMU's main campus in Harrogate, Tennessee. Services are available on Mondays and Wednesdays from 2.30 to 5.30 p.m. and Fridays from 2.30 to 4.30 p.m. on a first-come, first-served basis for individuals or families with income below $50,000. VITA clients should bring necessary tax information, including W-2s, 1099s, 1098s, and SSA cards for your self-independence. Additionally, having a previous year's tax return on hand will speed the process along. For more information, contact Holt at 423-869-6699 or 423-737-2828. Senior Citizens Home Assistance Service Incorporated presents a Chocolate Lovers Fest sponsored by Walter State Community College, Claiborne County Campus on February 13th from 4 to 6 p.m. CEO Tim Howe and Marketing Coordinator Kari Jordan sat down with us to talk about this week's event. February the 13th beginning at 4 p.m. at Walter State Community College at the uh, Claiborne Campus. Uh, we'll have a Chocolate Fest which is to raise money to help with the uh, sliding scale fee clients that we serve in Claiborne County. Um, the Chocolate Fest is, consists of different types of chocolate to taste and also those items will be available for auction. So at this time we've got like 24 plus different types of chocolate items that we'll be tasting and have available for auction. Um, also, there will be gift baskets. Uh, we have a variety of different items that are available in the gift baskets. We have two tickets to Dollywood. We have um, Six Flags tickets. We have um, a t weekend stay at the Clarion Inn in Gatlinburg available. We have a Duck Dynasty basket, which is uh, chocolates and some t-shirts and things like that, hat and everything. So that's, those are some of the nicer things that we have. Uh, we have a chair that was donated by England Manufacturing that'll be available for um, auction as well. I think everybody has a mother or a father at some point in time they're going to see maybe that person decline they're going to need help with keeping them in their home they're still probably going to need to go have a job and go to work every day do the things that they need to do and so our agency is there to make sure that they their loved one can stay in their home and the fact that we offer that sliding skill fee at seven dollars an hour um, starting out is just a big reason and makes it very affordable for folks to use our agency and to um, come out and support us. It says a lot that, that you believe in what we do. Um, we value that. We appreciate that. Another great thing about our agency is that we have a 91% efficiency rating, which means out of every dollar that we get, 91, 91 cents of that dollar goes back to the programs to serve the people. The sampling of chocolate begins at 4 p.m. and auction begins at 5 p.m. Call 423-626-0087 for more information. Admission is $10. Two college professors are taking their classes on an underwater adventure. This fall, two Roan State Community College professors Bruce Cantrell and adjunct professor Jessica Fain will be establishing a class that has never existed before. Classroom Under the Sea will broadcast seminars and offer a full credit class all while on the ocean floor at the Marine Resources Development Foundation located in Key Largo, Florida. The seminars will offer interviews involving leading specialists, ocean exploration, and ocean conservation along with many others. Marine Resource Development Foundation and Roan State plan to offer the free seminars to any school who is interested via internet. While broadcasting seminars and teaching class, Cantrell and Fain will set a world record for the longest time spent living underwater, a total of 72 days. 
According to the Guinness World Records, Richard Presley spent 69 days under the water in 1992. Cantrell and Fain will be staying 21 feet below the surface in an underwater habitat. The habitat contains one wet room, two bedrooms, and a common living area. Although the two teachers are expected are excited about setting a new world record, their main focus is on educating students. No mistake about it. This is about education. It's about breaking new ground in education. But we're going to be down there for 10 weeks. It doesn't take a real mathematician to say 10 weeks. To, you know, that's 70 days. Well, the world record happens to be 69 days. So if we're successful, uh, Jessica and I will set a new world record. But what's really exciting is the fact that we're going to be able to broadcast to a lot of inner city schools, a lot of rural city schools, and it's going to be free for everyone to watch. So hopefully we're going to be able to introduce topics such as invasive species or climate change or um, the coral restoration projects, stuff like that that a lot of students would not have the opportunity to even learn about, much less be able to physically see. And so we're going to actually be able to teach and reach students in a way that's never been done before. So we're really excited about it. Cantrell and Fain are expected to start their journey on October 4th and will resurface December 15th. Construction on the new State Highway 33 bridge continues. The construction was plagued with delays, but bids reopened last year, pushing the project further. The former project began in 2009 and was expected to be completed in June of 2012. Travelers can expect delays with the closure down to one lane. The projected costs are estimated at $22.4 million, making it the second most expensive bridge project in the state. Coming up after the break, Ashley Hurley reintroduces her at home here at home with a look at the volunteers at Manor House and shared blessings. Looking for efficient, compassionate, and comprehensive health care for you and your family? Visit University Medical Clinic. All providers are faculty members of LMU's The Bus College of Osteopathic Medicine and are board certified in their specialty. Multiple specialties available including family medicine, pediatrics, OBGYN, and osteopathic manipulative medicine with locations in Harrogate, Taswell, and New Taswell and most insurance plans accepted. University Medical Clinic is here to serve you. Call 423-869-7193 for an appointment. University Medical Clinic. When you're traveling throughout the tri-states, stay smart at Holiday Inn Express of Middlesboro. With nearly 60 rooms to choose from, fitness center, full complimentary hot breakfast bar, and seasonal pool, Holiday Inn Express of Middlesboro is all about catering to your travel needs. Our rooms are all equipped with flat screen TV, refrigerator, microwave, and we're conveniently located just seconds from the area's attractions. When you're on the road, stay smart at Holiday Inn Express, located on the Cumberland Gap Parkway, Middlesboro. Make reservations today by calling 606-248-6860. I will help families adopt children from around the world and in our own backyard. I am teaching ethics to the next generation of lawyers. I will make a difference for the underserved of this region. I will be an advocate for my clients. As a prosecutor, I fought for those who couldn't speak for themselves. I'm a lawyer and professor. I will be a lawyer. I will be a lawyer. I will be a lawyer. love your car or truck, let us help you keep it clean at Soapy J's. Soapy J's has unlimited wash plans to fit every budget. Try our $5 express wash or one of our three monthly wash plans. The wheel deal. The Soapy J. Or the new Blast Wax. With our monthly wash plans, if you pay with credit card, all you do is pay for the present month and your card will be billed on the first of each month. Don't forget, Soapy J's has free vacuums with any wash. Soapy J's express car wash open seven days a week. Let us help keep your car or truck clean at Soapy J's. Soapy J's on the Cumberland Gap Parkway, Middlesboro. After a long break, it was decided to bring back one of our favorite segments here on LMU Tri-State News. Here's Ashley Hurley with the latest edition of Here at Home. Enjoy. Everyone, Ashley Hurley here. I know you have been wondering where Here at Home went. Well, it didn't go anywhere. We have been working hard at getting different perspectives from volunteers on what volunteering at Manor House and Shared Blessings means to them. I enjoy it. It gets me out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> and I just uh, just enjoy working with the girls here mm -hmm. and with people. I like to help people and um, I think it's God's calling for me to be a volunteer to help try to help people in the area. 
Well, you see so many people that have needs and a lot of times I can talk to somebody out somewhere and I'll tell them, you know, they'll talk about what a hard time they're having them and I'll ask them if they know about Manna House and Shower Blessings and they come back and thank me for sending them up here. It means um, if, if low-income families come in here, they can buy the kids' clothes, they can buy the husband's clothes, the women can buy their clothes at the very low prices and they've, they're, Lisa, Lisa does prayer with people, she helps, comes in this room, says prayer and let you get food if you can't afford it. I know there's individuals in this county that need help and it's a blessing knowing that I'm there, one of those that volunteers to help that because I did not realize that uh, Shared Blessings was only done with volunteer work and so if you don't have no volunteers then uh, Shared Blessings doors would close. If you have been driving by Mana House and Shared Blessings and wondering exactly what they do, I speak with volunteers who answer that exact question. It blesses you to see that, you know, that you can hand out things for them if they need it and, you know, try to lead them to the Lord while they're here if they don't know the Lord. And uh, it just makes you feel good. There's uh, the prices on their clothing and stuff is so reasonable that it helps people that doesn't have a lot of money to spend on clothes. Uh, it also gives people food people that need food and assistance. Well I know they need anything in the grocery lines all the time and hygiene products and stuff like that and then the other donations that we take we can sell them and the money we get out of them used to buy uh, things that the people need. You have to come in, you gotta come and try it. If you, if you think I'm lying, come and see because this would blow your mind. They got baby clothes, men's clothes, women's clothes and everything, cheap. So come in over here and see if you think I'm not telling you the truth or not. If you have ever wondered about volunteering and if it is right for you, these volunteers will tell you that it is right for everyone. Open your heart up, you know, uh, let Lord show you what you need to do. And if you have a few minutes of hour or two each day and you've got somewhere to volunteer, then go volunteer because there are so many needy people here in Claiborne County and uh, anytime, you know, that we can open the doors, you know, to help people like that, I think it's a good thing. I want to understand what money that is brought in from selling donations that's made here is used to buy groceries and even help people out in need of other things even. I've heard them talking about when they have burnouts and things like that, that they help with that. And so that's what the money goes to. When we first started out, we were kind of having a hard time ourselves mm -hmm. and then we got to the point that we didn't I mean we still need help some but you know but I know there's a lot of people in this area that need a lot of help more than we do and I just like to help people. Still feeling a little skeptical about volunteering? Well this volunteer will give you some added pep to your step when it comes to volunteering and helping your community. How they treat us. Yeah. It's not like uh, um, some, if you go into a high fancy store without just blue jeans and a shirt on, they won't fool with you. Has to be dress clothes and nice outfits. Because I have been in, I have, I used to shop at different places, but they don't, they would, when you walk in to the store, instead of being, thinking you have money, if you want to buy it, some people come up and say, you ain't going to steal that, are you? They never did this here because this is the how. Um, this is the store of the Lord, when that's one place you can never find. They're all school and they're not doing nothing. I would tell anybody, especially the younger kids, to go up there because there's so much to be done there, and anybody can do it. It don't take much. You know, a couple of hours a day, whatever time that you can give out of your schedule to go do it, I would volunteer to go do it. I hope that you have enjoyed this here at home. Stay tuned in the upcoming weeks to view more here at home segments with me, 
Ashley Hurley. Thanks, Ashley. How did Lincoln Memorial University Athletics do this weekend? Stay with us. After the break, Adam Haley will give you the complete rundown on scores and statistics from this weekend's games. That's when you come back on LMU Tri-State News. Whether traveling for business or pleasure, Sleep Inn and Suites of Middlesbrough, Kentucky invites you to dream better here. Located at the foothills of the Cumberland Gap, Sleep Inn and Suites offers luxurious rooms equipped with microwave fridge combo, desk, ergonomic chair, wireless internet, and 32-inch flat screen TV. While staying with us, visit our fitness center, wake up to our complimentary hot breakfast bar, or have a bedtime snack with our fresh baked cookies. Sleep Inn and Suites, located off Highway 25E, Middlesboro. The J. Frank White Academy is more than a high school. Your child will have room to grow in mind, body, and spirit. Small, safe learning environments, individualized learning plans, and cutting-edge technology. Every child deserves a quality education in a safe, nurturing environment. Our college prep program teaches a love of learning, self-discipline, and service to others. The Academy is fully accredited by Advanced Ed. You have a choice at the J. Frank White Academy. No matter whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner, Subway of Harrogate and Middlesbrough has your fresh interests at heart. On your way to work, try one of our mouth-watering breakfast sandwich or flatbread omelets. If it's lunch or dinner time, choose from our wide selection of classic, select, or premium sandwiches, all made to your order. If you're serving a crowd, Subway has sandwich platters, giant subs, box lunches, and even cookie platters. Whether it's dine-in or carry-out, you can eat healthy and eat fresh at Subway. Subway, 362 Catawba Avenue in Harrogate and on the corner of the Village Square Mall, Middlesbrough. It's the Old Town Grill. The Old Town Grill is a special place where you bring more than family, more than friends. Bring a hearty appetite. Because at the Old Town Grill, you'll never walk away hungry. A delicious change from the ordinary. The perfect place to bring the entire family. The best food and plenty of it. Join the fun and treat your appetite to something special. It's the OTG. The OTG is the place to be. Welcome back. Last weekend, the Lincoln Memorial University Athletics Department were active as four teams were in action. We'll go over all four, but let's start in women's basketball, where the Lady Rail Splitters knew by the time they hit the floor Saturday night to take on Newberry, that a win would set them alone in third place in the conference. LMU started the game on a 22-5 run in the first seven minutes and held the Wolf to 26.7% from the field on their way to a 19-point halftime lead. Newberry pulled back to within nine points in the first five minutes of the second half, but would never get closer as LMU stopped the Wolves en route to a 77-63 victory. Katrina Otteson came off the bench to lead the Lady Rail Splitters in scoring with 16 points. As for the men, the Rail Splitters were attempting to avenge a loss from last season and get back into the winning column after their loss to Carson Newman on February the 5th. The Rail Splitters came out of the chute hotter than a frying pan on a stove, and before Newberry knew what hit them, the Wolves were down 31 to 10 and eventually trailed at halftime 46-29. Head coach Josh Schertz knew that a 17-point halftime lead would not be enough against the Wolves, who came into the night second in the nation in scoring average, and he was right. Down by 20 points, Newberry went on a 24-5 run using five three-pointers during that stretch that would bring the Wolves back to within one. But LMU's Chance Jones hit a layup that started an 11-2 run that would be enough to push LMU to the 92-77 win. Both teams will be back in action on Wednesday, February 12th at home when they host Tusculum College. The women will tip at 6 p.m. with the men to follow. You can catch the action on 91.3 FM WLMU or on LMU TV Channel 20 with pregame starting at 5.40 p.m. with Rusty Peace. On the baseball diamond, the Rail Splitters started South Atlantic Conference play on the road in Salisbury, North Carolina against Newberry. The Wolves used a four-run fourth to take game one of the three-game set on Friday, 7-4. In game one of the Saturday doubleheader, Newberry came out swinging, scoring eight of their nine runs in the first six innings, but the Wolves had to hold off a late rally by LMU to win 9-8. The Wolves, however, could not complete the sweep and would drop their first game of the season, 8-5, in game three. West Todd picked up the win for LMU, pitching six and a third innings, allowing eight hits and four earned runs. The Rail Splitters will play their home opener on Tuesday, February 11th, against the University of Virginia Wise at 2 p.m. In softball, the Lady Rail Splitters traveled to Columbus, Georgia over the weekend to participate in the Cougar Classic. 
On Saturday, Kristen Toole knocked in three RBIs in LMU's first game as the ladies would defeat King College 9-1. Game two saw a different opponent, but the same result as the Lady Rail Splitters beat Belmont Abbey 9-4. Pitcher Samantha Smith picked up both wins on Saturday. Sunday once again brought two new opponents, but this time it was different results. The Lady Rail Splitters would drop game one to five for four to three in eight innings after a Lindsey Russell sacrifice fly to right field scored Jacqueline Boever from third base. Nevertheless, LMU would bounce back in the second game to defeat host Columbus State 4-2. Now at 5-1 on the season, the Lady Rustlers will be back in action at home on Wednesday, February 12th against Lise McRae at 1 p.m. Injuries are a part of every sport, and one of the most known injuries is an ACL tear. And here to talk to us about the steps back to the game from that injury is Kristen Cook. In decades past, an ACL injury was a devastating event that ended many athletes' careers. Hopes, dreams, and lifelong aspirations could come to a tragic end with one false step. However, as modern medicine and surgery has developed, an ACL injury is not quite the devastating injury it once was. I think back in the, the 80s, uh, an ACL tear was probably career-ending. 90s, we, we saw a lot of advancement in the, in the uh, surgery procedures. and. Uh, and where it wasn't uh, a career-ending surgery. Now it is a season-ending surgery. You're, you're out probably, on average, four to six months. Surgery is only half the battle. Physical therapists and athletic trainers are just as imperative to successful recovery as a surgeon. Just as much credit is due to those who work behind the scenes to get athletes ready to return to the game in as good as condition as they once were. Athletes report that, you know, maybe in four to six months they were ready to return to their sport but it really took them about a year, even a year and a half, to feel as strong as the uninvolved legs. So they are being educated more on how to prevent uh, ACL tears. And then two, we're incorporating more um, uh, plyometrics, teaching the body and teaching athletes how to land. Proper rehab is essential to any athlete's long journey to return to the sport. And this proper recovery is only possible with dedicated athletic trainers and therapists. Some of the long-term side effects would be maybe an early onset of arthritis, maybe uh, long-term strength deficits. There may be, uh, you may not be 100% strength compared to the other, other legs. During the rehab process, these athletic trainers and therapists become more than athletic professionals. They become an athlete's friend, source of support, and an ultimate guiding force to a full recovery. NASCAR fans rejoice. The offseason is almost over and the roar of the engines will soon be heard again as the Sprint Cup Series is gearing up for their Sprint Unlimited on Saturday night, February 15th at Daytona International Speedway. This non-points race will feature drivers that won the pole position during the 2013 season and previous unlimited winners who qualified for at least one race last year. The green flag will drop around 8 p.m. And qualifying for the Great American Race, the Daytona 500, will be the following afternoon. Now stay tuned. When we come back, Tiffany Duncan will have your weekly entertainment report. And that's next here on LMU Tri-State News. Looking for efficient, compassionate, and comprehensive health care for you and your family? Visit University Medical Clinic. All providers are faculty members of LMU's The Bus College of Osteopathic Medicine and are board certified in their specialty. Multiple specialties available including family medicine, pediatrics, OBGYN, and osteopathic manipulative medicine with locations in Harrogate, Taswell, and New Taswell, and most insurance plans accepted. University Medical Clinic is here to serve you. Call 423-869-7193 for an appointment. University Medical Clinic. When you're traveling throughout the Tri-States, stay smart at Holiday Inn Express of Middlesboro. With nearly 60 rooms to choose from, fitness center, full complimentary hot breakfast bar, and seasonal pool, Holiday Inn Express of Middlesboro is all about catering to your travel needs. Our rooms are all equipped with flat screen TV, refrigerator, microwave, and we're conveniently located just seconds from the area's attractions. When you're on the road, stay smart at Holiday Inn Express, located on the Cumberland Gap Parkway, Middlesboro. Make reservations today by calling 606-248-6860. Welcome back. Now for the full recap on entertainment, we turn to Tiffany Duncan. A little Disney princess has been subject to death threats. Mia Talerico, five-year-old Disney Channel star of Good Luck Charlie, started receiving death threats back in January. 
According to the police documents obtained by TMZ, Talerico received the alarming messages on her personal Instagram monitored by her mother. The unnamed suspect sent a disturbing message. A photograph of the young star's head with a bloody fist arrived next, accompanied with a terrifying caption. Talerico's mother has reached out to Disney security, who in return contacted the LAPD. CNN reported the Los Angeles Police Department's Threat Management Unit is investigating the threats. Talerico plays Charlie in Good Luck Charlie. The show will end its run on Disney Channel February 16th after 100 episodes. He was disqualified for Oscar consideration for asking for support. Now he is giving his side of the story. Two weeks ago, Bruce Broughton, a former Academy governor, was disqualified for illegal campaigning tactics. Broughton emailed voters in the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences music branch to bring attention to his song. The rap.com stated, Broughton believes he has done nothing unethical. He said the current president, Cheryl Boone Isaacs, had just the same influence on other projects. Isaacs was a film marketing executive on past Oscar contenders, while she also held the position as an Academy Governor. Broughton's Oscar nomination was for original song. The rap.com also says the best song category is meant to be anonymous. Voters are given a DVD with film clips, but not the name of the composers. Sounds fair enough, right? Well, when Broughton sent his 70-plus emails, it revealed that he had co-wrote the song Alone, Not Yet Alone. This compromises and violates the rules, said the Academy, according to the rap.com. Justin Bieber will soon be heading to court. The pop singer's Miami court date is set for March 3rd. His charges include driving under the influence, resisting arrest, and driving with an invalid license. His February 14th arraignment has been canceled following his plea of not being guilty. The March 3rd court date is just one week before he's set to appear in Toronto court for an assault charge. The Dogma duo are together again on television and not film. And they won't really be on television. Anyway, Ben Affleck and Matt Damon are teaming up for, with CBS to produce a new sitcom. The two have already received the green light to produce the pilot episode for the new comedy. According to the po Huffington Post, Affleck and Damon's show More Time with Family will center on a dad and husband who decides to beco become more of a family man. Tom Popham, Damon's co-star in Behind the Candelabra, is set to play the lead role. Valentine's Day is upon us, and that usually means sappy love stories. Well, this year, not every movie is that cheesy love story. Take your sweetheart to see About Last Night. Director Steve Pink brings to life a modern version of the 1986 film. This romantic comedy stars Kevin Hart, Michael Lillet, Regina Hall, and Joy Bryant. The two couples enter into a budding relationship after meeting at a bar. The relationships are soon put to the test. Catch this R-rated film in theaters on February 14th. Endless Love plays up your more traditional Valentine's Day views on movies. Two teenagers fight for their love in this remake. Alex Pettifer and Gabriella Wilde portray a love that must be fought for. Not happy with his daughter's new relationship, the girl's father tries his best to keep her from her new love. The PG-13 film hits theaters Valentine's Day. If you're looking for some ideas for your Valentine's Day weekend, start looking at the Clayton Center for the Arts. Maryville College Theater presents Legally Blonde, the musical. The musical is based on the novel of Legally Blonde and the 2001 film. The play runs from February 14th through February 16th at the Ronald and Linda Nutt Theater. Tickets are available for each night at ClaytonArtCenter.com. The Knoxville Opera will be performing Donzetti's The Elixir of Love. Valentine's Weekend, the romantic comedy bends your heart for Nemarino as he pursues his love, Adina. There is only one problem, though. She's engaged. Nemarino will go as far as taking a love potion to win over the girl of his dreams. The performances at the Tennessee Theater run on February 14th and Sunday, February 16th. Now it's time for your useless entertainment fact of the week. Aerosmith's Dude Looks Like a Lady was written about Vince Neil of Motley Crue. Keeping you up to date on what's going on in the world of entertainment with your weekly entertainment report, I'm Tiffany Duncan.
Thank you for joining us this week. For Adam Haley, Tiffany Duncan, and everyone behind the scenes, I'm Adam Plyler. Join us next week for another edition of LMU Tri-State News. Good night.